I'm speaking with Folky Anger from Ericsson about one of the key developments in 5G, and that's the deployment of 5G core for standalone 5G. So Folky, can you just tell us about why 5G standalone deployments need a new core architecture? Yes, uh, sure. If you look at the 5G core standalone, we have new network functions uh, defined by 3DPP. So in order to have the, the architecture for the standalone, we need to deploy these new network functions like SMF, AMF, uh, and so on. And that is then in addition to the existing ones we have today for 5G non-standalone operation or 4G uh, operation. Now for 5G core, Ericsson talks about needing to introduce a dual mode core. What does that actually mean for mobile operators? Yeah, I mean, it means that we can serve our customers, the operators, with a core network that can handle existing uh, EPC, Evolve Packet Core traffic, uh, the 5G non-standalone traffic, and the 5G uh, standalone. So the dual comes from supporting 4G and 5G uh, at the same time. For mobile operators that are moving into the 5G phase, what do they need to have in place? What do they need to introduce the 5G core? Because this is a very different kind of deployment to any other mobile core that they've had before. Isn't that correct? Yeah, I mean, that, that's correct. If, if we look at uh, what is required from, let's say, an infrastructure perspective, uh, is to be able to run uh, cloud-native uh, network functions. Uh, so you need a, a layer that can, can handle this kind of cloud-native network functions, for instance, adding a container-as-a-service uh, layer uh, in, your, in your data center, and also to have the, the, o, the ONM capabilities in order to, to manage also these cloud network functions, in addition to the virtual network functions uh, that are commonly uh, deployed today. Also, what's important here is to have the possibilities to have the interworking between, let's say, legacy uh, core network and the new uh, capabilities that the 5G core standalone brings. Uh, for instance, if, if you have certain um, capacity already today uh, on your side using pooling capabilities, we can add capabilities also by introducing cloud network functions that interwork with the existing virtual or even physical functions in the core. So interworking is a very important aspect, but how can mobile operators be prepared and ready for the introduction of cloud native capabilities? Because that's something that's very new to mobile operators. Is there any way that this can be made quite seamless? We can see examples already today where we have deployed with, for instance, two, two operators, uh, Verizon and Telstra. And if we take the case of Telstra, uh, what they introduced then is uh, additional uh, capacity by deploying a cloud native. In, in their case, it was an MME, adding that to the pool. So I see it similar when you add the 5D core standalone, that uh, it's going to be, yes, it's going to be so that you need to have the sort of say the infrastructure, the cloud infrastructure in place in order to deploy this cloud native functions. And at the same time, we need to ensure that we have interworking. And that can be also, for instance, to have a continuous uh, voice coverage throughout the network. There will not be uh, 5G NR coverage everywhere. So we need from a core perspective uh, to support, for instance, EPS uh, fallback in order to have a continued uh, voice service. Uh, so yes, there are a number of new things uh, that we bring here with this cloud, net, net, cloud native network functions for the 5D core standalone. At the same time, though, we need to ensure that from a, uh, from a user uh, experience, may it be a mobile broadband service or a voice, that we have this kind of continuous uh, coverage. And that we solve by interworking between the different uh, core, uh, core network functions. And then for the mobile operators, it's not just about deploying new IT infrastructure, but also about having new skills and new ways of working. How can Ericsson help the operators to adapt to a new set of operational procedures? Yeah, I mean, in order to, to basically run these new network functions uh, very efficiently, uh, we, we have invested in tools to help, to help our operators uh, to manage uh, these network functions. It is, for instance, uh, the possibility to simplify the way you deploy software. We call it the software delivery pipeline. 
where we have a number of automating steps. Uh, one example here is uh, in order to really test that the software is working the way it's supposed to be, we have something called automatic acceptance testing. And also we're bringing up, uh, similar like we did on the virtual side, also for the cloud native, uh, different kind of life cycle management workflows in order to instantiate, uh, scale up, scale down and also terminate uh, cloud native functions. And these are examples of how we help our customers to, to run uh, these networks more efficiently. Then there are obviously some benefits uh, having cloud native network functions. If you look at uh, uh, a software upgrade, uh, then you can take smaller pieces uh, of the application to do a software upgrade and avoid a large uh, upgrade. And that means that we can have even less uh, interference during a software upgrade or basically no interference by doing in-service software upgrade during daytime instead of having, let's say, maintenance windows during nighttime. So I think this is really a benefit also from an operator moving to more cloud native uh, network functions. So you mentioned that Verizon and Telstra have already demonstrated these new 5G core de deployments and attributes. What are the key things that Ericsson learned from these early deployments? Yeah, there are a couple of learnings we have. I mean, first of all, obviously, it's great to have, have it tested uh, with real traffic th through, uh, through the networks in order to, uh, to see that the, the nodes behave like they're supposed to be behaving, the cloud native, so get the characteristics there. Uh, also, we, we get feedback on, on how these network functions are, are operated, uh, so we can also get that feedback into our R&D in order to further enhance uh, how you maintain and operate uh, these network functions. Uh, so it's, I mean, it's a great start. Uh, we had, had the, the cloud native MME in commercial operations since December last year, and we're const constantly adding more subscribers into that one, so great start. And when does Ericsson think we might see fully standalone 5G deployments? Uh, might it be soon after the 3GPP release 16 specifications are completed? I would say it will even come, come now, let's say from mid-2020. We, we expect to see the first uh, commercial networks uh, having 5G core standalone uh, in, in operation. Uh, we have some markets that we've been involved in extensive uh, performance and field trials activities uh, like China and South Korea. So we foresee that the first 5D core standalone, let's say mid this year or quarter three this year, uh, we will start to see those going into operation. In addition to these two markets, we have more than 90 engagement uh, with different operators around the world on 5D core standalone. Uh, so, so I anticipate there will be a few more launches beyond China and, and South Korea during 2020. Uh, first, uh, it may be so that we see some deployment to target, let's say, the mobile broadband for consumer. Uh, but we also see interest from having more kind of enterprise uh, tailored deployments uh, to cover a certain area uh, for a specific enterprise customer where 5G core standalone brings additional benefit beyond uh, what the existing core networks can do. For instance, where you have more uh, possibilities to do slicing, uh, where we can further uh, reduce the latency uh, in the network. So you're going to see some mobile broadband uh, deployments this year, and, and also I believe we can see some enterprise kind of deployments. And finally, do you think operators will wait to see the experience of some of the early movers or do you think the mobile operator community already understands the benefits of 5G core capabilities? I believe there is a general consensus about these capabilities that this new architecture brings. Uh, if you look at setup times of, a, let's say, a voice or a data call and so on, compared with a, a non-standalone versus a standalone. Uh, then some use cases may take a bit longer. Uh, if you look at how fast the enterprise market will be served uh, with 5G core standalone, I believe we vary uh, between different markets. Uh, we know in certain countries, for instance, where you have released dedicated spectrum uh, for enterprise, like in Germany, uh, this can come a bit faster. Uh, so uh, to your question, uh, yes, there will certainly be phasing. Uh, some markets will take the lead, and I believe it's a great opportunity to look at these places and, and take the learnings uh, 
uh, to, to other uh, before we see really a big uh, rollout of, of 5G core standalone. I think there's little doubt that the introduction of new standalone 5G core is one of the key trends that we're seeing in the mobile operator space this year and also finding out how operators are benefiting from the early deployments. So, Folke, thank you very much for talking to us about this today. Thank you.